Hi, Pioneer. I'm Robertino Martinez, part of the education team here at Team Putout. And today, I will help you set up your development environment. We have two options. An online environment using Demeter, that's a third-party tool that provides workspaces with everything we need in the browser, or a local environment using Docker and VS Code. But don't worry, you don't have to learn Docker. Both are easy to set up and use. But if you happen to have any questions, remember that you can go to discord.gg slash input output and ask for help at the Setup Plutus M channel or any of the Plutus Pioneers related channels. We'll be there waiting for you. Okay, let's get started. To create our environment, the first thing we need to do is to go to Demeter.run. There, we click on Login, sign in however you want, and we are going to land here. Go to Create New Project down here, choose the default organization, US Central, Next, Pre Plan. This should be enough to complete the whole Bluetooth Pioneer course. Next. We name our project, we can do PPP, create project, and open. So this is the PPP project, and this is our dashboard, but we don't have any workspaces yet. So let's create a new one, clicking here and create your first workspace. And now it asks first if we want to clone a repository. So in this case, we can go to github.com slash inputabudhk slash Bluetooth Pioneer Program. Here, click on fork, create fork. And now we have our own version of the Bluetooth Pioneer Program. We copy this URL, choose the stack that we are going to work with because we are going to work with Bluetooth. We select Bluetooth apps. The workspace, you can choose whichever you want, but keep in mind that bigger ones consume more resources, so you will run out of free credits faster. I'm going to choose medium. Then the network, we're going to use preview and create. Cool. So now if we go to the top, we see that our instance is being provisioned, so we have to wait for a bit. And that's it. Our instance is running, as you can see, and we can open it clicking on the VS Code logo here. And it will open a new tab containing our project. You can trust the authors, yes. You can change to dark mode also if you want to. And that's it. You can start working now. You can open a terminal going to the burger menu, going to terminal, new terminal. And you can explore the code here. Just a quick overview of the code. We're going to ignore the dev container. This is for the local setup. We're going to ignore the docs. We have the docs. If you go to GitHub slash input output HK slash Bluetooth Pioneer program. And here you can scroll down to the documentation and there you go. You have the prerequisite, how to do the setup, and we will keep adding more documentation while completing each week of the course. So you can ignore this, you can ignore this and everything here. So you only care about the code folder that contains each week code. For example, in week two, we have the lecture folder containing all the lectures we are going to go through in this week. The homework folder containing the homework you have to complete for this week. And we have the test folder containing all the tests you can run to check if you correctly completed the homework. Some weeks we'll have the asset folder. This could contain compiled smart contracts, configuration files, etc. We will cover them in the respective lesson. And also we might have uh, the scripts folder containing some scripts to automate boring stuff. And that's pretty much it. So the first time you open this, you will want to go to the code folder and do a quick cabal 
update to make sure all the indexes are up to date. Cool. We clear this up. And now, for example, imagine you want to explore Wix2 lecture. You can go inside the Wix2 folder and say, Cabal, REPL. And now you will be inside an interactive environment that has access to all the smart contracts we coded in the lecture. So for example, if you want to test out the 4D2 smart contract, you can say import 42, enter. Now, for example, we can say uh, 42, save validator, and it compile the validator and save it in the Bluetooth. We can do much more stuff. You will see it in the actual lesson. Now we can get out of here with colon Q, clear. And finally, if you completed your homework and you want to test it out, you can say cabal test homework. And there you go. This command compile our homework and run a bunch of tests that we have pre-written for you. As you can see, we have six out of eight tests failed because we didn't do the homework. So let's go to here. You can see homework tests, testing homework one. And we have a bunch of cases. Some fail, some didn't. And because we are running the smart contracts in a simulated blockchain, you can see at which step your smart contract fail and in which cases. So you can use this information to correct your homework. Every week, the objective is to pass all the tests. So this was homework one and homework two. Always remember to pause your instance where you're not working on it anymore. Closing the tab is not enough. The resources are still being consumed. Going back to the dashboard and going to the bottom, we can see our daily DCU usage. Remember that we have 2 million DC units, and if we click on view detail, we can see that our consumption is due to a workspace, nothing about containers, nothing about Cardano Node because we didn't use Cardano Node yet. DBCing all these services are available to you for use, and each one has its own consumption. So make sure to keep track of them. And finally, even if you pause your workspace, you will still be consuming a little bit of DC units every month because of the storage you are occupying. The only way to stop all usage is to delete the workspace. And that's it about the remote setup. Let's do the local one now. For a local environment, we need Docker, VS Code, and the remote development extension. First, we go to docker.com. Choose your platform and follow the instructions. Then to get VS Code, we just go to code.visualstudio.com. Here's offering Mac because I'm on Mac right now, but you can click here and choose your platform and install it like any other software. And once you have VS Code open, you can go to the extensions tab and here look for remote development. This one, click here, install, and once everything is done, you should see something like this on your bottom left corner. We have everything we need to develop locally. Now, the only thing left to do is to clone the repository and open it in VS Code. Going back to our Bluetooth Pioneer program fork, we go to code, copy, go to our local terminal, git clone, Bluetooth Pioneer program. Now we CD into the repository. As you can see, we are in the fourth iteration. And now the only thing we need to do is to open the repository in VS Code. As you can see, VS Code found our configuration file for the dev container and is asking us if we want to reopen this project in its container. We say yes, please do. 
You can see the logs by clicking here. And when you reach this log, it means that everything is ready to go. So you can kill this terminal, open a new one, terminal, new terminal, and we're ready to go. Let's make this a little bigger. CD into call, cabal, update. Clear the terminal. And for example, we can go inside week two and say cabal test homework. Okay, took a while, but it's just the first time and our test ran smoothly. Of course they failed because we didn't do the homework again, but they run perfectly well. Finally, we will release a new lesson every week. So to keep your repository up to date, always remember to click here to sync your fork and pull the changes from either Demeter or your local setup. You are ready to start the course.